The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We got some economic numbers out this morning. We start things off slightly in the red for the S&Ps. You're negative by seven points. You see the action this morning, though, down to the 830 numbers. We have retail sales out this morning. Market jumps almost 20 points on that number from where we were at 830, still negative by six points. NASDAQ 100, we're lower by 45 points. That's about one third percent in the red. You were as low as 12. 12,140, you jump up to 12,200. You see the action even since 6 a.m. this morning. Lower lows, lower highs, but we got two way moves going on. The Dow in positive territory right now, the only index futures up less than one tenth percent. You're 15 points in the positive, 31,266 in the Russell, negative by half a percent this morning. Bitcoin sitting at about 20,000. Ethereum, I was reading this morning, Ethereum, uh, that changeover completely done now. Be interesting to see how Ethereum moves uh, with that transformation taking place. Maybe we'll get into that a little bit later in the hour. Crude, we hit $90 yesterday, man. What time was that at? Just after noon Eastern time. You trade to about 88 as we end the day this morning. We're backing off yet again. 86, 88, the price of crude. Gold contract, under 1,700 bucks, 1,695. We were just as low as 1,690. And you jump to notes and bonds. You are getting a little bit of a lift from where we were, but we just hit 114.12. And I think, not quite over there, 114.07. I was gonna say, I think that might get us to a recent low, not quite the case, but we're sitting at 3.42% right now. Uh, yeah, quite a pullback in price, quite a rise in yields, whether you're looking at. Now, what's interesting is you take a look at the 10-year, which is ZN on the Thinkorswim platform. We're trading to about 114.25. You take a look at the two-year, well below where we were as in higher yield for the two-year right now. I think the two-year is pushing something like 3.8%. I'll pull it up later in the program. We jump over to the VIX this morning. VIX sitting at an elevated level of 26.26, but off of the highs of 28 as we started the week, uh, not started the week, but as we came back for the acceleration on Tuesday for that CPI data. All right, let's jump around to the news. We'll kick things off with retail sales unexpectedly rise after a drop in the prior month. Value of overall purchases rose 0.3% in August, above the estimates. July retail sales revised lower to a 0.4% decline. Okay, now overall retail sales increased 0.3% after a downwardly revised 0.4% drop in July. Excluding gas, retail sales were up 0.8%. Not bad, right? Median estimate called for a 0.1% drop in retail sales. So you get a surprise to the upside. You have eight of 13 retail categories growing including a surge in sales at auto dealers, auto dealers, purchases at furniture stores, health and personal care stores, and non-store retailers declined. Okay, interesting, a surge in sales at auto dealers. Did you see that one coming? The value of sales at gas stations slumped again, not surprising considering the price of gas and what it's done over the last month or two. While households are breathing a sigh of relief, uh, widespread infl inflation limiting to spend on other things whether that be necessities like food or more discretionary purchases like back to school items, but consumer spending, as they say, far from collapsing. Grocery store sales grew 0.2% last month amid rising food prices. The cost of food at home has surged 13.5% in the last year, the most since 1979. Pretty staggering numbers, man. Food up almost 14% across the board. I wonder how that number even shakes out in terms of uh, I mean, I, grain prices have been through the roof, right, with what's going on with Ukraine. But it feels like the healthy items and the items in refrigerators are going up at a faster rate. But that just might be, may, might be my perception uh, of things. Very possible. Sales at restaurants and bars, the only services component in the report, up 1.1%. So restaurants and bars uh, rising strongest since April after dropping the prior month. So this number is not adjusted for inflation, okay? Retail sales report primarily focuses on goods, not services. 
because it's a very positive number, but you have to understand what's actually in it. Consumers have broadly been shifting toward pre-pandemic spending patterns, okay, which means allocating more towards services like entertainment and travel and away from the merchandise heavy tilt to the past two years. So that number is out. We also get unemployment claims. 200 and excuse me, 213,000, quite a number, decreasing by 5,000. Uh, median estimate was for 227. Healthy economy, man. If you're just looking at the jobs numbers, you're looking at the retail sales numbers, four-week move in average, very healthy, 224,000. Continuing claims rising slightly to 1.4 million. Continuing claims, one week delayed versus the initial unemployment claims. Uh, and there is your look in terms of those numbers. You were rising, right, from March through July. But on a weekly basis, we're actually seeing initial, initial claims dropping. Not sure how that plays out to every other dynamic going on with the Fed trying to cool the economy just a bit to tame rising prices. And meanwhile, we have less and less people filing an initial unemployment claim. And 213000 is probably even below a number of a normal healthy economy. If we're not dealing with some of the influences probably still coming out of the pandemic over the last couple of years. So we get both of those numbers this morning. Uh, and we also get import prices. I mean, numbers all over the place, but all over the place. Import prices fell for a second straight month, offering one source of relief from inflation. I think you're getting a quick glimpse, folks, of why it's so difficult sometimes to forecast what's going on. Just this morning, like in the last hour, right? Not only did we get CPI 48 hours ago, which is maybe second to the jobs number, the number one report that you got to watch right now because it's determining what the Fed is doing and how the market is going. But we just got retail sales, unemployment claims, and you're getting import prices on top. In light of inflation being such an important factor right now, import prices much more important than normally over the last decades when inflation was not a problem. Import prices, yes, something that the market watched, but not like all type of price readings are getting watched right now. Uh, prices of imported goods dropped 1% in August from July, the first consecutive monthly retreat since the pandemic began. Excluding petroleum, prices dipped 0.2% from July. That was the number this morning. August saw the fourth straight monthly drop in core import prices, okay, because gasoline was just crushing this thing, petroleum, as they put it. Uh, August saw the fourth straight monthly drop in core, a turnabout that in part reflects U.S. currency appreciation. So that's a part of things going on as well. Inflation, uh, the dollar, I mean, we'll jump over to the dollar. We haven't jumped to the currencies yet, right? I didn't used to do the currency roundup. You know, you're looking at it, but I wasn't watching it as closely. But right now, it's what's going on, man. A uh, little bit of a drop right now, but boy, sitting pretty healthily, healthy at pretty much the close of action that we had on Friday, pushing 110 in the dollar index. We're back technically 11 pennies so far today as the markets slide a bit. The Dow just gave up its positive gain since I've been talking, and the S&Ps are now negative by about 10 points right now. We jump to the Euro-US dollar, right at parity, sitting at 100. That's a 15-minute chart. You were as low as about 99.6. Euro-US dollar, man. Watch out. You're in trouble. Pound US dollar. Yeah, small bounce. Now, I've been talking about these, man. If you're trading the pound US dollar or the Euro-US dollar, pound... You're in some rough shape, man, where you are, but maybe closer to the lower boundary, euro, a little closer to the upper boundary. When we come back, folks, we'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets sliding a bit. S&P's now off about 13 points. NASDAQ 100, you're off about 70. Yeah, just more than half a percent. The Dow is positive when I kick things off. You're negative by 31 points right now. As I was finishing that thought up, your U.S. dollar, putting it on a daily basis, you can see we're sitting at parity, but the Euro-US dollar, in terms of this channel that it's within, much closer to the upper boundary line than when you take a look at the pound U.S. dollar, okay? Uh, maybe, so you compare the two of them, right? The pound potentially catching a little bit of a bid versus the euro pulling back. Pound potentially maybe a little bit stronger going forward than the euro. Both of them in trouble versus the dollar, though, folks. Downtrend channels across the board, and it's a pretty steep channel, to say the least. Uh, and the biggest news of the day, which I didn't even get into in the first segment, how about the railroads and the unions reaching a tentative deal on the eve of the deadline? I was listening to some great Bloomberg commentary about this last night, uh, and... To put it lightly, obviously, the railroads very important to what goes on right now. You get a stop like that, uh, you got a stop of goods at a time of high inflation. Not really a factor that you'd want helping you out. Twenty straight hours in the latest rounds of talks, and they come out a deal. And uh, it's not always the pay that people are negotiating, because sometimes it's the rights of the workers and management issues at stake and those can be a lot more difficult than just a stroke of the pen for some cash for a company that's making money relinquishing the rights of the workers or just uh, say in management whatever it is right corporate culture one of the things they were able to obtain was contract language exempting time off for some medical events that was a core issue for the organized labor thirty seven thousand uh, dollars the dollars workers thirty seven thousand people uh, and that was one of the two unions that had not accepted an earlier tentative agreement. So they had 10 out of the 12, I think it was as of yesterday, had accepted the uh, earlier agreement, but the two unions that were left were by far the largest. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, and they're talking about three of them right near have all agreed and they represent about 60,000 workers. The union uh, workers still need to 
ratify that, but you get a 24% wage increase over five years, including 14.1% effective immediately, as well as five annual $1,000 payments. All right, so they got some decent raises, man. Uh, with prices going through the roof, workers having a little bit more leverage right now, and maybe it's just because they need it. You know, you got to fight for some of that pay, folks, especially if you have the power of the union behind you. Because we just saw food's going up. What did I just say? 12.9%, 13.9% on the year. All they're doing is raising their price with what food has gone up. To put things in context, is another way of spinning that type of a rage of a raise. And 24% over five years, well, they're getting 14% initially. So then they're only getting 10% over the next four years, which is 2.5% a year. And what do you think inflation is going to be running one year from now, four years forward, right? In the final second, third, fourth, and fifth year of that agreement, do you think it's going to average out at 2.5%? Probably not. Uh, so that was probably part of the thinking there in terms of the business or the uh, railroads, whatever. Um, but nonetheless, that could have been the biggest story of the day, folks, because while we know every other economic number is coming, not really sure of the implications that could have. I mean, when I was listening to one analyst last night talk about, uh, you know, if you're, I think it was wheat they were talking about, the harvest is just about to come about, some of the grains, if you are in the producer business and you're going to harvest that, Right? There's only one way to get it around, folks, and that is by rail. And so if that doesn't happen, you're talking about food prices, you're talking about everything uh, could have been at stake. So I think that's a good thing overall that that gets done in a big way. And we'll see. They still got a vote on it. But it seems like a pretty good deal for the workers on the forefront in terms of they got some of the things they were asking for, times off, time off for certain medical events. And then you got wage increases as well as payments on top of it. All right, what do we got up here? as well. Adobe, that's a big one. They're buying Figma for $20 billion. Uh, we check out Adobe this morning. This market, a little dicey right now, folks. Adobe's going to open down $50, $50, $40, $43, dollars $44. We'll get it exact. Uh, Adobe, yeah, they're spending $20 billion. You jump over to the Analyze tab, you pull up the Fundamentals tab underneath that. Adobe, $153 billion company. So decent chunk of change for a $153 billion company, but uh, they are target a more consumer-friendly creative offering is how they put it to help expand tools for creative professionals, Adobe. Uh, so we'll see how they open on the open. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. We got Amazon shares down about a dollar right now to 127.02. We jump over to Apple shares down a dollar as well. Tech stocks a little rolling over, man. Um, you know, on Tuesday when we got those, that CPI number, folks, okay, and you drop down 100 points and you settle the day at about 4,000 for a bit from about 10 o'clock, 10.45 in the morning, up right until about 12.30. You were still sitting at about 2,000, You actually uh, 4,000, excuse me. You got a bit higher by 16 points and then you really sold off to this area that we've been bouncing around at, which is about 39.50. Uh, if you look at the S&Ps, for instance, okay, because we had a trade in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options, folks. If you want to try it out, you can find it on the newsletter tab on the front page of TFNN. Everything we do, you can try out free for 30 days. Excuse me, you pay for it, but you have a money-back guarantee, so it's risk-free for 30 days. Uh, and we had a put in the SPY. And we were in it, unfortunately, as part of it ran up. But on the drop on Tuesday, we were able to get out with a decent profit. And I got out of that trade uh, when the S&P was chop spy was chopping around at about 400 or so. OK, now. You could say that there was money left on the table because it's sitting at 392. All right. But I want to go over it real quick because there's zero regret at all. Now, number one, you had an index. OK, because if you asked me when I was getting out of that trade, if it was going to go lower or higher. I would have said lower by a dramatic fashion. So you could have made the argument to keep the trade on. But at some point, folks, you have to realize now it was a put, okay, and it was had gone far out of the market at one point, and then it came deep into the market on this move. Now, just by the number that it was at that morning, okay, from 415 to 400, I ran the numbers, and you're talking about, okay, a 15 point drop in a 415 point dollar index, which is a 3.61% drop. Okay, the S&P folks dropped 3.61%. 
and what you had happen when, when you're trading options, okay, is that you had volatility increasing. So there was an increase in the intrinsic value of the put, okay, because it had dropped dramatically. So the price drop, I had gained intrinsic value because I had a right to sell it at a strike price that it had gone through and now had tremendous in intrinsic value. But you also had premium for extrinsic value in terms of volatility that had increased in that product as well. Okay, and they were for expiration this Friday, and we had just gotten into it uh, a few days before. It was a trade looking for action through this week's economic numbers, through CPI in particular, okay, because that was so important for the Fed's decision coming up, was the trade that was made. And just looking at the daily basis, okay, all it had done is given up the last three or four days that the, the market had run up. We got into that trade a little too early was only was the only thing that prevented it from being a much bigger win okay but you have to consider those things folks and i bring it up because if you start regretting getting out of a trade that you're in when an index drops 3.6 percent in your direction you're going to struggle man so think about that type of stuff when you're making those trades don't regret taking wins folks we'll be right back for the open of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at an S&P 
dropping a bit from where we were. You're coming right into where we were near the close right now, 39.46 to see where we were yesterday. That's bumping up basically against lows outside of that 39.29 low before the market just kind of saved itself in the final half hour of trading. NASDAQ 100, you're off 103 points right now. That's more than eight tenths percent in the red. And you're about 40 to 45 points off of its lows. But you take a look, man, basically bumping around at the lows of just yesterday. Dicey area for the markets. Dow off 70 points as well. So jump over to the VIX. Volatility index 26.25 right now. All right, let's jump to crypto. So we have Bitcoin under 20,000 yet again. Ethereum basically flat. Now, Maybe this spike, I think, might have been the action when the, to put on put it, software upgrade went live. So Ethereum last night trades from 1560 down to six, excuse me, up to 1650. You're back to 1576. So the biggest ever upgrade just took effect in what industry experts are calling a game changer for the entire crypto sector. So they cut their electricity use, something like, yeah, 99% is what they're going to cut it by. That's usually one of the biggest problems for some of these cryptocurrencies. The very first proof of stake block of transactions has finalized. And I want to see if they talk about what changes. Yeah, so it slashes energy consumption by roughly 99.95%. Okay, so you got greater sustainability. I was reading one article that talked about they had a team of developers. I think this might have been the article. They had a team of 100 developers working on this. Yeah, it was a different article for months or years or something like that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this goes forward. But you could see, you know, I'm going to find the other article because there were some cool things in terms of talking about what Ethereum actually will become and the earning potential for it because this changes who actually confirms each transaction, I believe, on the Ethereum network, allowing token holders, Ethereum holders, to confirm those transactions as validate those transactions, I think is the better terminology, uh, as opposed to the miners who are validating everything in the prior setup. All right, what else do we got here? Uh, buy now, pay later. CFPC, CFPB. Uh, they're going to regulate things like credit cards, and that is a good thing for all of us, folks. Because, unfortunately, the poorest of Americans are the ones to get preyed upon by some pretty accelerated ways of stealing their wealth. And when you talk about buy now, pay later being more, 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 more widespread, I mean, you're only getting people deeper in debt to that degree. So, you know, for all of us. That is not a good thing. Those payday lenders, those arguments to me, they made on both sides. People need short-term loans to make it through, okay? You can't cut off people from having the ability to do that, but you could simply regulate some of the percentages to make sure people are not being crucified by those companies. And if they can't exist on those types of structures and you can't, you know, basically lock people into 100, 200, 300% type fees on the money that they're accessing, then maybe they shouldn't be in business to that degree. We jump to inflation. So yesterday you have Kathy Wood, contrarian deflation call, and uh, who joins the fund? Elon Musk, of, Ford, of course. Not sure that's the case, folks. You could say that there's a delay, in my opinion, in terms of what's going to happen in this economy. You could make the case, I think, very reasonably that the hikes that the Fed has had, they've given it no time to have an impact, I'm not making that case, okay? But I would listen to people making that case because I think you could make that case reasonably. I don't think I'd agree with it right now with the data that we're seeing. I think it would be a leap to make that case. I think it's very difficult to make the case uh, that they are making out here. Uh, most vocal proponent of deflation, getting a few high profile supporters and you know, Elon Musk folks, be very skeptical following anything he's saying. You can be a brilliant man that can change the world. Doesn't mean that you want to follow what he's saying, especially on social media, considering what he's done previously. Uh, and we'll see where, we're, where it plays out, folks, over time. All right, let's take a look at crude, 86.74. You take a look at crude. Now, this chart I have up here, 85.50, the blue line. You put this thing back, and you're talking about this a weekly. We're just chopping right at around this area, right? Seems like that's a pretty good area, folks, 
that crude may be able to find a bid. You know, yeah, you can shop around. Maybe you get some lows around 80 bucks, but hard pressed to see crude trading below the 85.41 level. One of the main factors that's driving that market is potentially the slowdowns in China. Okay, without those slowdowns going on, I don't know where crude would be. Now, the interesting dynamic going on here is that those slowdowns are going to exist for I don't know how long. How do they get out of that? How do you get out of zero COVID in China, right? But we have bigger issues on the crude market, no matter what is happening with China, in my opinion. And at some point, uh, they will figure out how to live without shutting down their nation over and over and over and over. I don't know when that happens or how it happens. But it's important to see where we are on that chart, because I think that's a critical area. And be very difficult to see crude going back to where we started that run in November with in light of what's going on and the potential volatility in Europe as we come into the winter and energy prices. You jump to natural gas, right? Sitting right near the highs, man. Natural gas, $10.28. We chopped to eight. We're back to 844. Pretty relatively high considering the lows we've had in that market for natural gas as well. Jumping back to some of the currencies. Dollar index continuing to climb. We pull up the 15-minute. We backed off. We're right back to basically where we opened the market at 830, technically, on the dollar index. You jump over to the U.S. dollar yen. We have gold under 1,700, okay? And meanwhile, that's not really the yen or the dollar doing that. Gold continuing to struggle. You're down $17 right now at 1691. And gold right near the lower boundary or where this thing is held. I mean, you're coming into, you know, the chop around around COVID was 1704. You start getting deep into that volatility, you can probably trade to 1500. Now, I will say that we're not even at the lows of where we were the week of July 18th. So you're talking about a low there of 1678. It's only about 12, 13 bucks. You back it up to August 9th, 1677. Now, this is going back a year, right? Okay. So August 9th of 2021, you're talking about 1677. March of 2021, 1677. And then March of 2021, 1673. So all of these lows, March 8th, March 29th, the weeks of August 9th, and then just recently July 18th, all of those lows are all within about $5 of each other from 1673 to 1678. So if you're looking to go long gold, uh, maybe that's a decent area. You set your stop somewhere under those price levels. It trades below that. You're out, and uh, you get a bounce. We'll see where we go. But these markets, they're not bouncing, man. Look at this. s and is off 23 points right now. You put it on a 15-minute, 39.41. Close of yesterday, 39.29. But, boy, we just gave up 25 points from where we were at 8.45 this morning in the NASDAQ 100. You're coming into the lows as well. We just gave back that entire run the markets had, folks, in the final half hour trading yesterday. Stay tuned. We we'll get the S and P's down 23. We'll be right back in three minutes, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Data White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We've got markets catching a little bit of a bit off the lows of the session. We're now just negative by about 12 points in the S&P 39.53. We're up by about 10 points from where you hit a low there. NASDAQ 100 negative by 53. Jumping over to Ethereum real quickly again. I was reading a Bloomberg article because I was reading a few this morning. And unfortunately, I can't find the article that talked about there was a team of like 100 developers working for years or something like that. Uh, but Bloomberg had some of it. Now, when they were doing this, okay, uh, they had 41,000 people streaming this thing live on a viewing party featured content ranging from dry technical explanations and it is technically called a merge, okay? Uh, I'm getting a lesson myself, believe me. Long-awaited energy-saving merge upgrade. Now, what they talk about in here, which I just want to bring up, is that the change, okay, replaced power-hungry computers that were used to order transactions on the network with a more energy-efficient setup using piles of the network's native token Ether placed in so-called staking wallets. I don't understand the exact fundamentals of it, uh, but they are basically using the token on the network to validate the transactions. Now, there's 3,500 active decentralized apps, billions of crypto on there. And uh, yeah, it's been in the work for years, they said, to get that done. Never been done on such a large network. And it seems to have worked pretty well. And they might find some bugs and have to put that into the system. Uh, so they're watching it closely. But Ethereum, flat right now, 1578. You look at the drop off on Tuesday from 1750. This thing's just been chopping around as well. No real acceleration on that news. It's been known for years. Okay, so don't get caught up in that one. Uh, Ethereum here. You know, tough, tough deal, just like Bitcoin. Not sure they're able to catch a market with so much volatility to the downside in the general markets right now going on. We talk a lot about real estate. Let's jump to a little real estate in Canada as they continue to pull back. Benchmark prices dropped 1.6% in a month, 7.4% below the peak. Bank of Canada is doing that on purpose. They're dealing with their own woes in Canada, just like we are. Uh, 589,800. Right, decent action in terms of Canada. The home prices benchmark falling 1.6% though in August, 7.4% from the number that it hit in February. And there's your number right there. Now this is Canadian dollars, which is for the difference. I mean, pretty remarkable what's happened in the last couple of years, man. From 551, you're still sitting at 777. So what's that, 220? It's almost a 50% gain, man. When you were sitting, what did we come in? Yeah, 550 in the beginning of 2020, and less than three years later, we're still sitting, what did I just say, at 777, that's 227,000, which is more than 50%, because two, no, 227, it'd be 250, I need 275 to get to 550, yeah. So just shy of 50%, uh, huge moves. So we'll see what happens in that. Central Bank in Canada, 
0.2% to 0.3 to 3.25%. Yeah, and that has lifted the interest rate on variable rate mortgages to more than 5%. So same thing going on in Canada, man. You got to pull back. Uh, the rent dynamic, a lot more interesting in terms of what's going on now. I was reading some takes in terms of the rent that, yeah, it's going to be in the core, but it's not as bad as I've been talking about in particular. It's going to be so persistent. I don't know, folks. I mean, rent, uh, there's a lot of leases that got to get reset, I imagine, over the next year or two. And no matter what happens with the housing prices, because I don't, I don't see them pulling back an insane level, they can pull back 10 or 20 percent and rents don't have to take a huge hit because they have to catch up and there's going to be enough demand. And that's going to be in the core CPI number uh, out there for a while. Shelter makes up 40 percent of core CPI. It makes up almost one third of headline CPI. Remember that as these numbers go on, man, because they are going to be ever present. Now, the Fed, if that's the only thing that's persistent, OK, that's going to give the Fed plenty of room to slow down. So don't think that's going to have to push them if that's the only thing that's persistent. But it's still going to be in the numbers for a long time. And it's going to be pretty hot for the next 12 months, at least. Even some analysts talking about, and this is the number that kind of got in my head that I keep talking about, 4.5% uh, rent inflation in the year, end of year, 2024. 4.5%. That's just a number, folks. That's a number that X person individual is talking about, okay? Analysts, don't even remember their name. That's a number that's more than two years out from now. Everybody's been wrong. They can't even go six to 12 months out, okay? But who's to say it's even that low? Doesn't mean you have to be wrong to the upside. When people are looking for four to 5% rent inflation more than two years from now, doesn't even mean it has to be that low technically. So you want to consider those types of probabilities as you go out. All right, what else do we have pulled up here? This one's just an interesting one in terms of humanity. So Patagonia, the founders and his children, they're donating it all to fight climate change, $3 billion. Uh, his spouse, the founder, the spouse and his two adult children are giving away their ownership. He started some 50 years ago. Uh, Non-voting stock worth close to $3 billion will be owned by a collective that will use the profits that aren't reinvested into the business to fight climate change. Uh, they expect to contribute about $100 million a year. So congrats to that guy, man. Uh, live quite the life. I'm sure they're going to have some money for themselves and they'll be okay. But $3 billion uh, worked hard for that money and he's going to put it to use. Uh, pretty cool story, nonetheless. Not easy to do, man. When you talk about that type of wealth, you have kids that are still um, probably of decent age and uh, that money now going to get used to fight climate change. Another interesting article up here from Amazon now take this one for what it's worth, folks. I'm not even sure what it means. I tell you, I don't know if Amazon pays CNBC or they just get the clickbait because there's like one to two articles a day at least, it feels like, uh, about Amazon on CNBC. But they are shutting some of their warehouse footprint and this has a kind of an interesting chart in terms of where they're closing them. They have closed or canceled 44 facilities and delayed the opening of 25 sites as of this week. Uh, that's according to a supply chain and logistics consulting firm that tracks Amazon's distribution networks, MWPVL International. And you have the map here, okay? So you have the blue, light blue. I mean, come on. Couldn't they use a different color than, like, whatever you want to call that color blue? Is that a violet, maybe? Closed? Excuse me. We'll go aqua for canceling and yellow delaying. Uh, look at Boston. What's going on, man? They're, they're, they're stopping everything. That's kind of why this caught my eye in particular. But zooming in on Boston, okay. Everett closed in the second, uh, third quarter of this year. Dedham, good old Dedham. Went to high school in Dedham, Massachusetts. Noble and Greeno, amazing high school. Randolph, good old Randolph Rink. Played plenty of hockey up there. Lived right by Randolph. Mansfield and Milford. And then what do you have? Hudson, New Hampshire canceled due to public protests up there. Uh, they don't want Amazon. But I was, you know, five, five different up there in terms of New England alone. You go down to Tampa, uh, excuse me, Fort Myers was canceled. No reasons given. We got a lot going on uh, in the middle of Florida, folks. I'm out near Lakeland. And boy, we have a lot going on. They're always at a just huge Amazon airline uh, planes, excuse me, flying above. They have some warehouses going on. It probably makes sense, right? Central Florida, they can reach a lot of people from this location. Uh, but I guess the Northeast, probably cutting back and not quite the deal. Interesting on such a population density to have all of those 
getting closed for delivery stations kind of all at once in a year or two. But Amazon paring things back just a bit. All right, just like that, the markets catch a little bit of a lift. So much for negative prices. You got the S&Ps charging higher. We just popped 25 points from where we were on the open. You're just negative by one now at 39.63. Uh, you're just back to where you were at about 7.30 this morning. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be coming back, talk a little bit about our man Larry Pezzavento. He's got a live trading webinar coming up. Stay tuned. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets positive. You're looking at an S&P up by six points right now, trading at 39.52. NASDAQ's up by 21. You get the Dow up by 89 points. Russell in the red by about nine. You head on over to the front page, folks. Our man, Larry Pesavento, a five-hour live trading webinar. Trade what you see this coming Tuesday, five days from right now, September 20th. It's going to be from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern time. Larry does not really trade the final two hours of the trading day, folks. That's why he sets it up like this. Uh, join him at 9 a.m. on Tuesday for a five-hour live event where you'll see the tools you can use to help build yourself and edge using uh, many different trading philosophies that Larry uses. He goes over them all on the front page of TFNN. You're talking about Fibonacci's, of course, folks. You're talking about A to B's, C to D's. Uh, this will be archived. It's $295. You gain access to his newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7. You get that for a month for free. That's a $97 value right away. 
Uh, you know, it's not like that gets renewed or anything like that. You pay two ninety five. You receive a month of his newsletter for free. If you do nothing, it will just end after that. If you'd like to continue, you can do that as well. Okay, but that's coming up on Tuesday. And if you sign up for this, folks, you gain instant access to the newsletter ahead of time. Okay, and Larry puts out a bunch of great reports over the weekend, especially he's putting things out twenty four seven throughout the week, whether it's during the trading day at night sometimes, over the weekends, Saturdays, Sundays, whenever warranted, but he does have his Sunday reports. Uh, so if you're gonna sign out, check it out right now. You get access over the weekend to the newsletter, and if you're a current subscriber, automatic savings for your next payment for Fibonacci 24-7. I'm gonna try and be in there as often as I can that day. Tuesday, September 20th, uh, five-hour event with our man Larry Pezzavento, and boy, we got a market right now, folks, okay? And Tuesday kicks off uh, the Fed meeting. September 20th and 21st, uh, we're now through a lot of the economic numbers that we got this morning. You're basically right where you were before those numbers started to come in, right? This is where we were chopping around, 39.70, 39.65 for most of the overnight session. You do dip lower on the open. You get it all back. S&P futures positive by one. The day is young. Next week, we got the Fed. They're hiking 75, maybe even a full point. It's an interesting time to be in the markets, folks. Check out Larry's webinar, and we got a treat. Jacob is filling in. Send our man Basil Chapman a little white light as he's feeling a little under the weather this morning. Jacob's up next, folks. Have a great Thursday.